Hey guys, this is Matt with 4hydroponics.com and today I wanted to talk to you guys about some cloning tips and uh, how I like to take clones. Um, this process is basically the same for all these different mediums I have. I have Rockwell cubes, the Oasis cubes, the peat pucks, and the uh, Rapid Rooter uh, starter plucks. The peat pucks you'll need to soak a little bit previously to get them to puff up before you take your clones and the Rockwell cubes you're going to want to rinse them pretty thoroughly to get any dust out um, and then we're going to treat them just the same as everything else. Um, the next step I'm going to get some filtered clean water, um, non-chlorinated and I'm going to be using the power clone for this uh, demonstration but there's a lot of different stuff you can put in your water and you can also just use straight filtered water as well um, but I'd say try a couple ones see which ones you like we also got a video on some of the different cloning stuff um, on our channel there so uh, I'm going to use the rapid reader cubes for this demonstration um, I'm going to go ahead I've already dosed the water with the power clone and uh, I pH this to about 6.0 um, you can pH anywhere from 5.5 to around 6.2 um, some people are having better success at lower pHs but I've always pH right around 6 so um, I'm going to go ahead and let these soak and uh, the goal is to get them nice and saturated um, but we are going to give them a little bit of a squeeze because um, we don't want them dripping wet when we take our clones and like I said before um, all the process for all these cues is going to be basically the same get them um, treated and then get them soaked in your solution and once they're nice and saturated we're going to give them a little squeeze and uh, put one here in the cell tray and then I usually uh, take some rubbing alcohol and clean down my um, cutting board to make sure it's sterile. Um, I use a sterile scalpel. Um, if you have a mom that's sick and you're taking clones off of a healthy mom and a sick mom, you're going to want to use two different scalpels that can transmit the disease from one to another. So sterile scalpels are cheap, easy to find. Uh, I recommend just getting a brand new one for every time you clone. And then I'm going to be using the Root Tech cloning gel. There's a ton of different cloning gels, but this is the one that I've always uh, preferred. So uh, open this brand new scalpel up here. And uh, here we go, get that opened. So first thing I'm going to do is uh, when you take your cuts from your garden, you're going to want to have some kind of cup of water or container of water. You want to get those cuts or those branches into the water as soon as possible. You don't want a lot of air getting to your fresh cut. Um, some people even do their final cut underneath running water or underneath into a bowl of water. Um, I don't do that prep, uh, personally, but it absolutely is a great thing to try out, see if you have some better success with it. So, first I'll take a, a branch here. Go ahead, just take a look at it. Um, I'll probably take off a couple of these little nodes and a couple of these fan leaves here um, just to help promote root growth because that's what we're going for. So, first thing I'll do, be careful, don't cut yourself. Take off some of these lower fan leaves. Um, and uh, once you get it down to the shape and size you're looking for, some people do like to, you know, cut the tips of the fan leaves down that does seem to kind of stop the growth on the top and promote more root growth on the bottom. Uh, once again, try it, see if you like it. I've always had good results with it. Um, and then after I got my clone in the shape that I want it, and as many nodes and leaves as I want on there, I'm going to go ahead and make my final cut. This is the one I was talking about. Some people do make it under running water or in a bowl of water. Um, I just recommend having a sharp blade. You don't want to crush the cells down there. So don't use a dull pair of scissors. It's not going to get the same results. You want a nice clean cut cut at a 45 degree angle to get as much surface area as possible so we can dip it into our cloning gel. I'm once again using the Root Tech cloning gel. Um, some people like to soak it. I preferably give it about a 10 second soak, 5-10 second soak. Some people will take it a lot longer and I've also had great results by just dipping it um, but the soak really can't hurt. Um, it acts like a straw, it sucks some of that gel up and just make sure it's in there, especially if you're going into cloning machines I'd recommend it because the water tends to wash it off but knowing that it's got some inside of it, um, it'll definitely you know, increase your chances of popping those roots. So once we got a soak, uh, I'm going to make sure i got a nice amount of hormone on there. I am using gloves for this part because the synthetic hormone in these uh, cloning gels is probably not great to get on you. So for you know, a cheap pair of gloves can you know, give you a little bit of extra safety there. And, um, so we're going to go ahead and put our clone into our cube that's been soaked and we've got our nice gob of uh, gel on there and when you put it in here you want to make sure you get a little bit of resistance I don't push it all the way through the bottom I usually put it about two-thirds of the way down in there until I get some good resistance that allows me to know that I don't have any air touching that cut that I made once again slowing down my my root growth so there's a simple clone for you 
Um, this process is pretty similar with most plants. Certain plants don't like to be cloned, but uh, for the ones that do, this is the way to go. Um, after I get it into my cell tray over here, um, the next process begins of basically babying it along. I don't want it to be too wet. I don't want it to be too dry. Um, you do really got to watch your root zone temperature. You know, if you're too cold, you'll have a really hard time getting things to, to pop some roots. So for that, I do recommend a uh, heat mat. I use the Super Sprouter heat mat, and I also use their analog um, thermostat. This allows you to control the heat mat and get it to whatever temperature you want. And this thermostat comes with a probe that hangs off of it. Um, what I usually would do is take this probe and I'll uh, insert it into an empty plug that I'm using. And I'll get this plug and set it down into my cell tray. That way the heat mat will run until this plug reaches my, oops, my desired temperature. And humidity is also important since they don't have roots to get much moisture out of. They'll pull a lot of it out of the air. So we're going to use a humidity dome. I uh, prefer the ones with vents on them. Over the course of three to five days, I'll go from pretty much fully closed all the way to all the way open. And after about five days, I'll even start taking the dome off for extended periods of time, 10, 15, 20 minutes at a time, trying to kind of harden them off. Um, if you do everything right, good temperatures, good humidity, good cloning procedures, you should see roots come out anywhere from seven to you know, 15 days. Um, Hope this video helped you out and cleared up some stuff about cloning. It's pretty simple. I'd say give it a try. See if you can propagate some stuff at home. And uh, all this stuff's available at 4hydroponics.com. And uh, we'll check you out next time.